How's it going guys? And I'm here with a review of the latest DLC for Dragon Ball Z Kakarot Trunks the Warrior of Hope. And I've reviewed the entire game already, including the two other DLCs that were released. So if you haven't seen that video, I'll link it right here for you to watch. Now, let's get into this. So this may seem familiar to longtime Dragon Ball Z fans because if you've ever seen the special, The Future of Trunks, you've seen most of the story already. Now, they've also included in Trunks and Vegeta inside the hyperbolic time chamber, as well as the events of the episode Free the Future, where Trunks finally comes back to the future after Cell dies in the past and kills Android 17 and 18 and then finishes off Cell. We also get something that we never saw before in the anime and this is something that's exciting what I really liked about the main game and that is the original content. Now Trunks in his time in the future and we all know that it's an alternate future of course Trunks meets up with the Supreme Kai, and he is tasked with stopping Majin Buu from being reawakened, as well as stopping Bobbity, and they come upon Deborah as well. And this is a really cool scene because Majin Buu, spoiler alert, never gets reawakened. Instead, Trunks actually manages to stop both Deborah and Bobbity before. Bobbity has enough chance to absorb energy in order to unleash Majin Buu. So I thought that this was a really cool alternate timeline. Like this is something that I didn't expect. I was like, oh, we're probably going to get Trunks versus Buu. But no, Buu never comes because Trunks just fucking blows Bobbity away. And I was like, wow, damn. Now it comes at the cost of Supreme Kai and Kibito. And this is just something that, like, it really brings out the feeling that you felt if you've ever seen the history of Trunks when Gohan dies. And you just have this feeling in the pit of your stomach of hopelessness. Even if you have seen the way things play out in Dragon Ball Z. And you do see that Trunks actually does end up going back to the future and righting all the wrongs. So this kind of has like mixed feelings because, oh shit, Supreme Kai is dead, but the world is saved and countless lives have been saved. But you kind of think that, wow, you know, all the characters in, th in this alternate timeline are dead. Goku's dead, Gohan's dead, and now Supreme Kai, Supreme Kai is even dead. I'm like, man, this is a really depressing alternate timeline. And when you see Dragon Ball Super, you see just how depressing that timeline really is. Now you really get to see a bit more of the relationship between Gohan and Trunks. Now the one thing is, uh, you know, they use Trunks' kid voice when he's a younger teenager, and this doesn't really work here, but I really do like that they decided to go with Gohan's anime voice actor Kyle Herbert as opposed to who voiced him in the history of Trunks which was Damian Clark the voice of Cell. So it was cool that I got my preference of voice actor here because there was just something about Damian I, I mean I liked the job he did in the history of Trunks but I really just prefer to have Kyle Herbert because he is the voice of adult Gohan as far as I'm concerned but I just don't really understand why they decided to have Alexis Tipton do the voice of Trunks instead of Eric Vale when he's a younger teenager when the game first starts. I mean, this makes no sense. I mean, he sounds too young. And the weird thing is, is when Trunks becomes an older teen, Eric Vale does the voice, as you'd expect. So why not just have him do what he did in the history of Trunks and just have his voice sound just a little bit younger? not have Alexis Tipton do child Trunks voice. I mean, that makes absolutely no sense when you have the guy who already did the voice for Trunks when he was this age in that TV special. So that made no sense to me, but 
I mean, it's a minor complaint. It's not horrible. I mean, there are some younger teenagers that have their voice in higher registers before they hit puberty. So I guess this is a prepubescent trunks. Yeah, well, let's go with that one. But I like the attention to detail. I like all the fights. They seem a lot more difficult than in the base game or anything in the past two DLCs. I felt like I had to have a lot of healing items with me in order to overcome Android 17 and 18, especially in the final battle with Gohan versus Android 17 and 18, where he eventually dies. Uh, I really like that you don't have your arm, just like in the history of Trunks, after Android 18 sets off that massive blast when Gohan is trying to protect Trunks. That actually plays into the gameplay. You're actually doing one-armed attacks, and I thought that that was fucking awesome. I didn't expect that. I saw it in the trailer. I didn't expect it then, and I didn't expect it to play out this well, but to me... I felt like that was like something that they could have like overlooked easily and it just it just seems impressive and it is short but I did really enjoy how they tried to do the Majin Buu saga and wrap it up really quickly so it makes Trunks look absolutely boss because I thought I was going to just fight Majin Buu and it was kind of going to go just a little bit different. I knew it was going to be different, but I didn't expect him to just kill Bobbity and Deborah just like that. And Supreme Kai uh, ended up dying as well, as I mentioned before. So those were some big surprises there. And uh, they were really well done and played out. And I thought that that was some excellent writing. And it played into the alternate reality of the Trunks world. Now, of course, we have some new side missions. And I was really happy about this. And, of course, there's Dragon Ball callbacks. One of which sees Oolong eating a piece of candy, an all too familiar piece of candy, a diarrhea causing piece of candy. You remember that uh, from Dragon Ball from the first season? That was pretty funny to see Bulma tell Trunks to get Oolong to eat this piece of candy. And this is all to get Oolong to transform into Android 18 to stop a guy from ending it all because he's upset that Android 18 is dead at the hand of Trunks and that he'll never get the chance to profess his love for her. Like, this guy is infatuated with 18. Kind of like how Krillin is, but I mean, this guy is just a bit more creepy about it. So I think it's really funny when they finally have oolong go up to this guy and of course you know he can't do the transformation 100 percent perfect and she's got the little beady eyes and the guy says oh she doesn't look as good up close then we see master roshi asking you to dive deep into the ocean to find a girly magazine so he could use it as an offering to pay his respects to Krillin. And of course, we get Bulma and Master Roshi bickering at each other, and you know, it's just some classic Dragon Ball fun. Plus, Oolong also gets another side quest. Like, this is kind of like the Oolong show when you kind of think about it. And I have no problem with that. I'm a fan of Oolong. I really like that pig quite a bit. But he asked you to get back some treasure for him, and you think like, oh, you know, What's what they steal some money? They take his wallet? No, you know Oolong. Longtime Dragon Ball fans really know what Oolong's all about. And it turns out the Frieza Force is the are the thieves. And guess what they took for him? That same pair of panties that he wished for in Dragon Ball from Shenron. And to me, that was hilarious to see Trunks' reaction. And a lot of this is really funny, seeing Eric Vale have some fun with the Trunks character. And it's nice to have the spotlight on Trunks because, you know, Trunks never really got the spotlight of Goku and Vegeta or Gohan. So it's nice here that he kind of gets his own DLC. Kyle Herbert could have some fun with the character. And, you know, for all you people that are playing this with a Japanese voice, I was, well, I'm, I'm sorry, but, you know, me, I'm a dub fan, and I've always said that for years here on this channel. No offense to you sub fans, but, hey, you know, I'm a dub guy all the way. 
Also, it's interesting to note that Trunks has some new moves this time around, including the Heat Dome attack, which is just so awesome. That's the move that he used, where he points his palms upward and just kills Cell in a vertical uh, energy beam when he kills him when he goes back to the future. That is an awesome move, and I love using it. But come on, am I the only one who spams the shit out of the burning attack? I mean, that move is just so much fun to use. Just boom, 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 just keep hitting your enemies over and over with it. So, is the DLC good? Is it worth your time? Well, yeah, I would say that it is. I definitely had a good time with it. Uh, but it is short, and of course it's DLC, so, you know, of course it's short. But, you know, when you kind of take into account the price of these things you know you just kind of want to get even more out of them but at this stage in the game with dlc and the developers and the publishers what they expect out of developers uh, could we really expect any more uh, we should just be happy i guess that we got something pretty good and i'm a big fan of kakarot I absolutely love this game, and looking back at the complete package, this, in a way, to me at least, I know there's a lot of people that disagree, is the ultimate Dragon Ball Z experience. This is my favorite Dragon Ball Z game. I mean, it just spoke to me more than Xenoverse 2 did. I just really like having an open world to run around and, uh, you know, fly around in. I really enjoyed, you know, revisiting the story and seeing some of the exclusive content and the side missions. It was just a lot of entertainment. I felt like I really got the bang for my buck. Even if I had to pay more to experience the DLC, I think it's worth it. I have some good memories playing the game and the three DLCs. So yeah, if you already own Kakarot, I believe that downloading this DLC is a no-brainer. Anyway guys, I want to thank you all for watching, and please subscribe if you haven't already, and click the bell so you get all the notifications when I post all my new videos. I want to thank all my patrons for your continued support, and thanks again guys, I'll see you next time.